of God I stand before your throne of grace I found rest in your presence and fullness of joy and worship and will not I be your face singing what a faithful God have I sing with me come on oh for your grace. Thank you for wisdom and strength and power for releasing us into this kind of liberty even in you. We worship you and bless you Lord for this time now and forevermore in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. We continue on our series unto full stature in Christ. Christ will want to, his body to come into the measure of the stature of his fullness. Of his fullness have we all received grace upon grace. If we've received of his fullness, we've got what it takes to be able to stretch ourselves to our full capacity in Christ. And whatever it takes to be able to do this is made available for us. If we are to fully represent him and carry out his eternal purposes here on this earth, then we need to be able to fully stretch ourselves to our fullest potential in him so that we can fully manifest his fullness here on this earth. So that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. For the church to fully manifest his glory the way he intended the church to operate. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 1? 2 Corinthians 3. It says, Do we begin again to commend ourselves? Or need we, as some others, epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Ye are epistle. Ye written in our hearts. Known and read of all men. Ye are epistles. They say you the church, you are our epistles. Written in our hearts. Known and read of all men. So we don't need letters of recommendation. Whatever is in our hearts. Whatever we represent. Whatever we manifest. Whatever capacity we, 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 we're making. 
we, we revealing about Christ. It is seen in you. People look at you. And they point to us. And I can tell what we have deposited in you, what we have reproduced in you, or what originated from us to you. So you are epistles. Written in our hearts. Known and read of all men. So listen. What we have in our hearts. Even though people cannot get into our hearts. They can see what is in our heart. By the people we produce out of our lives. Because we are reproducing ourselves. In the people who sit and listen to us. And who observe our lifestyle. What we are, we transfer to them. What we are, we reproduce in them. What we are, they become. This is a divine technology by which what he has given to us, we can give to others. So they can also be become what they ought to be in Christ. So you are epistles written in our hearts known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us. Written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. Not with ink. <laughs> <laughs> but with the spirit of the living God. Not in tables of stone. But in fleshly tablets of the heart. Hallelujah. Amen. So what we are on the inside. As we minister by the spirit. We are literally reproducing ourselves in you. And then you become epistles of Christ. Because what is on the inside of us is of Christ. What you originated from is linked to who we have become in Christ. So it's not like writing on paper with ink, but this time, your lifestyle, and yes, what you profess, how you function, and how you manifest Christ, reflects great credit on we who spoke Christ to you, minister Christ by the Spirit to you. It is as good as writing a letter with ink on paper. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a divine arrangement that God has destined the church to come into. As we sit under his leadership. We sit under people he has ordained. Fivefold ministry giftings. Apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists and pastors. That as they sit under this grace and receive of this grace, they become what they are supposed to be in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Hallelujah. name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now listen, beloved. We want to turn about Bibles. 
To Philippians, Philippians chapter 2, two verse 19. Philippians 19. But I trust in the Lord to send Timothy shortly unto you. That I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own. Not the things which are Jesus Christ. But ye know the proof of him that as a son with the father he has said with me in the gospel. You know the proof of him. Him therefore I hope to send presently to you. So soon as I shall see how it will go with me. Paul says I'm going to send Timothy unto you. I have no man of kindred spirit. Who carry the same spirit that I carry? How did it Timothy come about carrying the same spirit that Paul carried? Timothy had become an epistle of Christ ministered by Paul. Timothy Paul Paul ministered it. So Paul transferred that spirit that he had to Timothy. So what Timothy would do with the assembly, it will be the same as Paul being physically present. That is why Jesus Christ said, and he waits upon them and say, receive you the Holy Ghost. Okay, say, monje un kon kron. He said, as the Father has sent me, send ye jano a suma meno. So send I you. Sa kwen ya suna me so me suma. This is how he's sending the church. Sa mbre no o suma As the Father has sent Christ, send ye jano a suma Christo. So Christ is sending us. I know till na Christo, and na a suma ye. Listen, beloved. See what it means is that basically Sir, we are supposed to represent Christ. As Christ transfers his heart and his spirit to us as a church. To fully represent him here on this earth. To be able to stretch ourselves to the full capacity in him. That is why he's bringing us. He says, I have no man like-minded. Because who will naturally care for yourself? Yes, 21. For all seek their own. So clearly we can see why there weren't too many people like Timothy. Because they sought their own. They have become a hindrance to many people in Christianity today. They seek their own. Not the things of Christ. They don't give it their all. They are in it for what they can get. They are in it for their personal benefits. For what is convenient to them. But Timothy was not like that. He came with his all. And avail himself with his all. And receive Paul as a father. He received Paul as a father. And Paul received Timothy as a son. As 
sons look like their fathers, Senya, so Timothy spiritually began to look like Paul. To translate. So it was a level of relationship that was developed between Paul and Timothy that did a trick. I believe that I want us to understand very clearly. Once this is ordained of God, it is not as simple as we make it feel. People who can benefit of this kind of uh, ideal spirit from, from Christ must be people who have opened their all and allow Christ to have his way in their lives. They are people who have decided to follow Christ unreservedly and giving them giving him their all. And they want to travel the whole distance with Christ. Through the mentor or the father that God has given to them. Paul said, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. So listen, whilst Paul was pursuing Christ with all his heart, Timothy was also following Paul with all his heart. It doesn't come any other, other way. We are not in this to waste our time. We are in this to reap maximum benefit and come to our fullest potential in Christ. We decide to give it our all. To pursue him with all our hearts. To press him into all that we can have in him. Hallelujah. Amen. All seek their own. That is the easiest path to pursue. Is the church only attracted by need-centered preaching that promises them heaven, promises them everything for what they can get for themselves, but not what they can become in Christ? Is that what the church is graceful? Hallelujah. Amen. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Chapter one. One. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. There was this father-son connection that existed between Paul and Timothy. That established a linkage between the spirit of Paul and the spirit of Timothy. So that transference became something very automatic. If Timothy didn't receive Paul as a father and took Paul for granted and looked at all the physical shortcomings of Paul or oh, he came with an agenda of how to take advantage of Paul and I, to get what to stand on his shoulders to get to where he wants to get to, not caring about the man. Paul, 
It wouldn't have happened. Shall we continue verse 3? I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing of remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Paul is always lifting Timothy up before the Lord. Lord, help my son. Help him order his steps aright. Help him navigate his way into the fulfillment of his destiny. Strengthen him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Help him fulfill his destiny. And all the purpose for which you brought him closer to me. That he'll be able to stand tall in his day. He said, greatly desiring to see thee. Be mindful of thy tears that I may be filled with joy. When I call, call to remembrance. The unfeigned faith that is in thee. Which first dwelt in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice and I'm persuaded that in thee also. Timothy's grandmother and mother had laid a certain foundation in him. No wonder he was well spoken of by the assemblies where he the assembly where he fellowship and everybody was talking to Paul about him. A young man well brought up. Love the Lord with a sincere faith in the Lord. But once he had this sincere faith, which sometimes that is all that church can do for us in the assemblies in which we serve. Listen, it's not bad. But I personally believe that the church of God should be able to bring us to the place where we can hit the ultimate target in our calling and grace. To be able to take us all the way to the end. So Timothy had an unfeigned faith. But it wasn't sufficient for Timothy to fulfill his destiny. God had an agenda to graduate Timothy to where he actually belonged. And thank God Paul came along. Paul sent very strongly he needed to take over this young man's life. Take him as his own as God directed him to make him stand where he had been ordained to stand. Ultimately. It's an unpersuaded. The unfeigned faith in your grandmother and mother. It's in you also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stirred up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Paul did something for Timothy. Paul Timothy. That his grandmother and mother could not do for him. What was it? He laid hands. And he transferred what he had. Into Timothy. As the Lord ordained it. It was not according to the will of man. It is how God had ordained it to happen. 
Through the laying on of hands, Paul transferred to Timothy. For Paul imparted his spirit to Timothy. So Timothy, and don't Timothy have Paul's spirit. Now our Paul, Timothy, Timothy could represent Paul. As Timothy began to mature in his deeper work with Paul, as he learned more and more, he came to the place where he could fully represent Paul anywhere. And that is exactly what he's supposed to be. My God, mm. how I wish it wouldn't be one Timothy, but in any assembly we can have about 70 Timothys. 100 Timothys. A thousand Timothys. That can serve the entire body of Christ. This is the will of God. But if all will stop seeking their own, if all will step into the full dimension of where God wants us to be, the story will be told differently. And I'm fully convinced that in this end time, this is where we are headed. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we turn to Philippians chapter 3? Yeah, Philippians 3. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 4, please. <clears throat> Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. Yeah, if any other man thinks that he has the, whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of Hebrews as such in the law, a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the check, touching the righteousness which is of the Lord blameless. Paul could have ended up here. No, no, that could have been the level he would have died in. As a Pharisee. Proud in being a Pharisee. But thanks be to God. He had an experience on the road to Damascus. That brought him to a place. Of realizing. That Christ wants to bring him into fullness. That there is more. That I have a place, an exalted place for you. In me. I have something else deeper than what you've tasted. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we look at verse 7? But all things were gained to me, those are counted loss for Christ after that experience. What were gained to me? All this Pharisee status and zeal concerning persecuting the church and all that. It was gained to me, but I count as loss. For Christ. Yeah, doubtless. And I count all things by loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. <clears throat> And do count them but dung that I may win Christ. Shall we continue? And be found in him not having my own righteousness which is of the law, but which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Now, 
that I may know him. This is where it all begins. That hunger for more and more and more of Christ. And insatiable hunger that will keep us pressing in for a lifetime for more and more and more of Christ. If we are going to come into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, we need this kind of hunger to be able to press in into the fullness of what he has for us. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained. So we don't get deceived. As we press on into God, we see some little results and we think we have arrived. We think we have attained. And, and then the hunger is just finished. And we, th- we, we want to be worshipped like kings. No. Not, not as though I have already attained. Either way, already perfect. But I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. There is a reason why Christ has apprehended the church. He has a purpose for apprehending us from the world unto his ultimate purpose. This should be our desire to keep pressing in to attain that for which he laid hold on us. To keep pressing in into him. Because there is an ultimate goal. And we keep pressing in and keep pressing in because life is not worth living if you don't attain the purpose for which he laid hold on us. These are, these are not man-made goals. These are goals that Christ himself has, has, has set for us. The ultimate destination he wants us to get to. The measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That if I may, that I may apprehend that for which I'm also apprehender of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's going to teach us how he does it. And brethren, I count on myself to have apprehended. I'm going to be deceived to think I've apprehended. Or I've come, I've arrived. No. But this one thing I do. This one thing I do. Forgetting those things that are behind. Reaching forward to those things that are before. I press. I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Father, we give you praise. This one thing I do. This one thing we should all do. This one thing I wish above all things that we all press into. 
And I want you to know there is more. If you think we have obtained something, there is still more. There is still more room for improvement. There is still more this sense to cover. There is still more we can come into. According to the will of God for our lives. Because there is a reason why he laid hold on us. Don't let it be lost on us. This is the will of God. This is the will of God. May it consume us. May it stir a great hunger in us. For more and more and more of him. Father, I give you praise. I thank you today. I bless you for your church. Father, that our hearts will be, as, will be set on eternal goals that you set for us. That will be tuned rightly from within. Whatever is not of you, whatever goals we've set that have made us too complacent. As we compare ourselves to others, may our eyes be open. May we live right. May we see things from his perspective. May we keep pressing in into him. May the pursuit of God be the greatest desire of our hearts. May we live to please him all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Beloved, God is calling you. He's calling you. He said, move from where you are. Press in. Break that barrier. Break that limit. Break that hold. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.